guys welcome back to the channel today we are going to rank the new master set players from the trade deadline event we're also going to go over some alternatives and some specific team builds so if you have certain players maybe this would change the rankings for some of these master set players especially if you are trying to qualify for the gaming world championship which does start on wednesday the open qualifiers if you have not registered you need to go and register at battle 5 for the 2022 nhl gwc and you will then get a collectible probably early this week before wednesday allowing you to compete in the competition in the video game. So guys, without any further ado, let's get into the rankings. All right, coming in at number five is going to be the 97 Jack Campbell. While he's an extremely good goaltender, he's got the all the necessities to being a great goaltender in 22. He's got gold post to post. He's got silver light work. He's got 72 aggression and then essentially 99 everything in stats. Only 6-3, and there's a lot of other options available to you, especially if you are trying to compete in the GWC. You've got the Pekka Rene, you've got Gary Price, you've got Robin Leonard. All of those options are going to be just as good, and it's going to cost you around the same to grab them. And in the terms of Pekka Rene, as well as Robin Leonard, they're both taller, so you might as well go with them. Uh, I see no reason to go out and make this card, unless you are a Leafs fan. Obviously, with the Le if you're a Leafs fan, then you are going to get a, uh, a great starting goaltender that you're going to be able to use for the rest of the game. That's on your favorite team. Uh, that being said, he comes in at number five. Coming in at number four might surprise some people is the 97 Anthony Duclair. Now, don't get me wrong. This is an incredible card. There's a couple reasons as to why Anthony Duclair is so low in this list. Number one is that, well, unfortunately, the Master Set players got leaked by EA early on uh, in the month. And we know that we are going to get a 97 Taylor Hall master set player for the trade deadline event. He's 6'1", and he has max skating. So no matter what, he is just going to be a better player the way you look at it. So not that this is a bad card. There's just going to be a better one for you by next Friday. So just keep that in mind. That being said, if you have Matt Duchesne, this is essentially him. So there's no reason to go out and get another Matt Duchesne type. I think that only one or maybe two of them is probably the best way to go. Now, if you don't have the Evo Matt Duchesne, this is a good option for you, but you might as well just save all your coins and cards if you are trying to make a Master Set winger for this event and just wait for the 97 Taylor Hall that is going to be better for you. Coming in at number three is the 97 Ray Bork. Now, I mentioned in the last uh, couple events that I wanted to talk to you guys about just fun cards, not just the ones that are going to give you the best ability against your competition. The 97 Ray Bork is an extremely fun card. He's got 1T, he's got off the rush if you just come down the wing and let her rip with a 99 overall slap shot and uh, accuracy and power, not that I would activate that. Tape to tape is nice, and then he's got truculence. I'm not going to lie, after taking all of the stats that I have over the last 60 games, I just don't hit a lot, and I think that I go for bumps more than hits, and I think truculence is one of the most important for my play style, and for anyone that has taken their stats go ahead and take a look at if you hit with your forwards or your defensemen and if you don't have an exceptional amount of hits per game you might want to think about putting truculence on not because you want to be able to crush people into the boards and and wipe them out but the ability to bump people off the puck with truculence is is extremely good that being said he's 5'11 so he is not going to be able to go up against those giant forwards like let's say Patrick Line uh, and be able to handle them very well so that is obviously why he falls down a little bit in the list here he's also only got 95 speed so, you know, when we come to the point where we're spending five, six hundred thousand coins on a card, at this stage, you might as well just wait for something a little bit better to come out. That being said, Ray Bork was one of my favorite players when I was growing up as a kid, and he looks to be very fun. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I really want to try out this truculence build, so I'm going to be trying to get him. Then we've got the 97, Keith Yandel, coming in at number two. And this is, an, is a phenomenal card. Left-handed defenseman, six foot one, with essentially 99 everything, and he's got 97 speed and 98 acceleration that you can throw on him. And obviously, that's just no matter what. That's basically max. The downfall to Keith Yandel is that his all of his abilities are really not something that you would particularly want on your defenseman. So. If you are going to be paying for a card that is essentially 99 across the board, as the new next few events come out, all of the cards are going to be good, no matter what. A 97 overall card is good, no matter what. What's going to separate them is their abilities, and this key Diano card just doesn't really have all that great abilities. He's not going to play ahead of Coburn. He's not going to play ahead of Victor Hedman. So you're looking at a third defenseman if you have a top-end team, specifically for GWC. That being said, if you do not have a defenseman that has like 99 skating, this is what this is like the better version of Adam Fox because Adam Fox is obviously smaller and has essentially 99 everything. This would be a better version, obviously left-handed, but just something to keep in mind. Not something that I think you need to make, not to mention we're going to get some other cards like Ryan McDonough, for example, 
um, that might be another option for you later on in this event. Then coming in at number one is the 97 Jeff Carter, six foot three, and he's just a really, really good build. He's got 96 on the draw. He's got 99 everything. He's 95 speed, 95 acceleration, which is obviously a little bit slower. That being said, you can play him at center. You can play him on the wing, which gives you some lineup flexibility. So if you did not get Patrick Line, I think this is a really, really good option for you among right-hand fours. He's got silver close quarters, which is awesome. Wheels is okay for a card like this. I, I don't think I would activate it just because I want to take advantage of a card that's a little bit faster. Uh, but close quarters on this card is phenomenal. If there is one to make in this event so far it would be jeff carter and the reason being is just he can play at center and he's a big body not to mention if you didn't get patrick line and you can't afford him now and you're trying to get you finish up your team for gwc he could be a great winger for you so again just something to keep in mind i don't know if any of these cards are must-haves but jeff carter is the closest thing to it now i want to talk to you a little bit about the gwc the gaming world championship the one hundred thousand dollar NHL 1v1 tournament and just team builds because again the open qualifiers come out and what your team would want to look like or some things that you might want to focus on I think having a big winger that you can hold on to the puck with is exceptional I and mean, Patrick Line has been awesome for me and I just really notice it it's very hard to knock him off the puck and again when you're playing this level of competition holding on to the puck and puck possession is going to be king also, Keith Primo, if you haven't made Keith Primo and you're around or have the option to, you need to make him. He is dominant, and his abilities in combination are just so good. He's got unstoppable force, goal close quarters. He's just such a good goal scorer um, that you really, really need to, to look out for him as well. Going down the list, make sure, again, with the stats that I've been tracking, obviously it's a little late. You might be able to do get a 30 games in before GWC, but take a look at some of the cards that you think would not really perform well for you but end up doing so and vice versa like Matthew Barzal's X Factor I don't know what it is guys there is something about this card that just flies obviously he's got very high speed but I know I released that video about custom skaters and you know if you haven't watched that go take a look and they just feel different Matthew Barzal stunned me that he didn't have one because he's just so good there uh, another thing on defense pay attention to if you score DDD one timers I've talked about this all year round there is something about this year where some people can score D to D one timers and some can't, and which makes no sense because there is really no trick to it. Uh, just some people can, some people can't. I don't know if it's a console thing. Maybe it's a controller issue with PS5. I have no idea. But if you do not score D to D one timers, take off any offensive uh, offensive abilities like one T or seeing eye, and go strictly for shutdown or, in my opinion, truculence, which I think would be better because truculence is going to give you that ability to actually knock people off the puck that have 99 balance. So that is something to keep in mind uh, going into this game because I think truculence is really going to be the the game breaker um, for you guys that will allow you to get the puck back against some of these players that are just so good at cycling with the puck. So guys, that being said, let me know what you think in the comments section down below, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.